Hello students. Now in this session, we will learn how to calculate the local field and internal field in the dielectric material when dielectric field is applied. So for that purpose, we can consider a parallel plate capacitor and it will be connected to a battery. So whenever this parallel plate capacitor is connected to the battery, immediately the charges are induced on that one. Now the electric field will be in this direction. So E1 is considered as the applied electric field. Now let us place a dielectric slab in between these parallel plate capacitor. So whenever the dielectric slab is placed in between the parallel plate capacitors, the charges are induced on the dielectric slab. So because of that one, an extra field is produced which is known as depolarizing field and it is in the opposite direction of E1. Now, the scientist Lorenz told that in addition to these induced charges, some more field is produced inside the dielectric material. So, to calculate that one, he have assumed a spherical cavity around an atom A inside the dielectric material. Because the dielectric material is a combination of several atoms, he have taken one atom and around that atom he have assumed a spherical cavity. So whenever he have assumed a spherical cavity due to the electric field E2 again the charges are induced on the spherical cavity in the opposite direction. <coughs> now electric field is produced in this direction. Now because of E3 the atom get polarized and electric field is produced in the direction E4. <coughs> okay, so here we got four types of electric fields. So even is called applied electric field. <coughs> E2 is depolarizing field because and this field is produced in the opposite direction to the applied electric field and this can be written as minus sigma P by epsilon naught. We know that E is equal to U by 4 pi epsilon naught R square and E is equal to this q by 4 pi epsilon square by epsilon naught. This is called charge density which can be represented with sigma. So based upon this equation we have written the depolarizing field. The charge induced on the dielectric slab by epsilon naught. And E3 is the <coughs> electric field produced due to charges induced on spherical cavity. And E4 is the electric field produced due to atomic dipoles. And this electric field E4 value is 0 because several atomic dipoles are there because of that one each dipole some electric field is produced and everything will be cancelled out for the symmetric surfaces. So for symmetric materials those are having symmetric structures like here the dielectric slab which we considered is in a cubic structure hence for that one E4 is 0. Hence, the total electric field, internal electric field produced in the dielectric material is a combination of E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. So, here E4 value is 0 and E1 we can write as it is applied electric field or we can write sigma by epsilon naught. 
minus e2 is sigma p by epsilon naught plus e3 plus 0. Now e internal is equal to e1 minus sigma p by epsilon naught plus e3. Now we have to calculate the electric field produced due to the spherical cavity. So this e3 value we need to find out. So for that purpose we have to take this e3 separately. So let it be equation 1. <coughs> Now for that purpose we take the spherical cavity and to calculate that E3 value we have assumed the axis X and Y. Now this to find E3. Now to find E3, the total electric field produced due to the charges induced on the spherical cavity. So these are the charges induced on the spherical cavity. Okay, so now the electric field is in this direction. So to find out this electric field E3, we have assumed a small part we have taken a small part which is considered as M and N. Okay, so this is small part. So it is making N making an angle theta and MN is a D theta. Okay, so the electric field produced due to the small part MN can be electric field produced due to small part mn can be considered as de3 and that de3 can be written as de dash cos theta because this electric field is along x direction and it is making this small part can be making some angle theta so hence we have written d theta. So on this small part the charge present is dq dash and we know the expression for the d dash d3 is equal to dq dash by 4 pi epsilon naught r square cos theta as r is the radius of the spherical cavity. So let it be equation 2. Now we need to calculate what will be the charge present on this spherical cavity. So to calculate this charge present on the spherical cavity we need to take so whenever you apply the electric field polarization takes place and that polarization vector also in this direction and we know that the relation between polarization vector and the charge P is equal to Q by A. We know this relation. So according to that one the polarization vector along x direction we can write P cos theta is equal to dq dash is the small charge present on the small part and da is the area of the small part. So dq dash is the charge on mn and da is the area of mn slice. Okay, we need to find out. So that implies dq dash can be written as da into cos theta. So let it be equation 3. Now we need to find out this da. So if you can take this small part on this spherical cavity. So you can take this small part. So if we can curve this small part it will appear like this. This is the actual slice. In reality the slice can be appeared like this. Means vertically if you can take that slice can be appear like this. So this will be the M. This will be the N. So it is like this. This will be the radius. Okay. So here the atom A will be present. So, so here this will be the N dash. Okay. This is the N dash. So now we are going to find out the area of this small part. 
okay so that area of mn can be written as da is equal to its surface area and thickness surface area and thickness so here the surface area can be written as 4 pi sorry 2 pi into radius into thickness is nothing but m into n okay so here radius is nothing but the small part radius is nothing but n into n dash you can see here n into n dash that is equal to 2 pi into n into n dash into m into n now we need to find out n n dash and m n values so for this to find out this n n dash and m n values you take this triangle it shows like this this is theta a n n n dash so if it is theta and the radius is r the opposite side value is r sin theta and this value is r cos theta hence n n dash value can be written as 2 pi into r sin theta now coming to the mn value to find out that mn value we have to consider the arc in the circle if there is an arc law so this is d theta and this will be the m into n and this is r okay so here let it be l mn value okay so l is equal to r into d theta l is nothing but mn is equal to r into d theta so finally we got r into d theta so you will get da value 2 pi r square sin theta d theta so this is the area you obtained okay so let it be equation 4 now you got the small parts area that area you substitute in the charge and this charge you substitute in the uh, equation 2 then you will get the electric field produced due to the small part which we have considered now first we will substitute this equation 4 in equation 3 substitute 4 in 3 so equation 3 is dq dash is equal to da cos theta and da we obtained 2 pi r square sin theta d theta 2 pi r square sin theta d theta into cos theta so this is equal to 2 pi r square sin theta cos theta d theta so this is the dq dash so let it be equation 5 now substitute this equation 5 in equation 2 then you will get the electric field produced due to the small part which we have assumed dq dash by 4 pi epsilon naught r square cos theta so then we will get de3 is equal to dq dash by 4 pi epsilon naught r square cos theta means dq dash is 2 pi r square sin theta cos theta by 4 pi epsilon naught r square cos theta d theta so 2 pi 2 times get cancelled r square r square get cancelled and we got de3 is equal to sin theta cos square theta d theta by 2 epsilon naught so this is the small electric field produced due to the small part mn now to find out the total electric field produced on the entire spherical cavity we need to integrate from 0 to pi because electric field is in the long x direction the angle we have to take it 180 
degrees. So, D E 3. So, that is equal to 0 to pi. What is the value obtained? Cos square theta D theta sin theta by 2 epsilon naught. Cos square theta sin theta D theta by 2 epsilon naught. So, we can take it as common 2 epsilon naught 0 to pi cos square theta sin theta and d theta. Now to solve this equation let us assume cos theta equal to x. Then if you can differentiate with respect to theta minus sin theta d theta is equal to dx. Means sin theta d theta is equal to minus dx. Now we can uh, write the uh, upper limits and lower limits for theta is equal to 0 x equal to cos 0 that is equal to 1 this is the lower limit for theta is equal to pi x equal to cos pi that is equal to minus 1 hence the limits changes from 1 to minus 1 therefore e3 is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught 1 to minus 1 x square into minus dx. So, here we will get minus 1 by 2 epsilon naught integral 1 to minus 1 x square dx. So, minus 1 by 2 epsilon naught not minus I think p somewhere we missed the p value ok ok. So, here x cube by so that is equal to minus p by 2 epsilon naught 1 to minus 1. So we will get minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 when we substitute the limits. So minus p by 2 epsilon naught and minus 2 by 3 and finally we got p by 3 epsilon naught e 3. Hence this is the electric field produced due to the spherical cavity. Hence the total electric field internal field E in is equal to E1 minus sigma P by epsilon naught plus P by 3 epsilon naught. Now this E1 minus sigma P by epsilon naught can be written as E effective field plus e P by 3 epsilon naught. This is the final expression for the internal field produced in the dielectric material. One minute. 